Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this is for the fantastically written and brilliantly made Tell Me Why. A three part episodic adventure developed by Don't Nod Entertainment, published by Xbox Games and is available to buy for £24.99 at the moment. That is for all three episodes or, and I urge your ass to do it right now, get it on Xbox Game Pass and if you don't have Game Pass, Bruh, come on, do it for your old pal Mosey, huh? So this excellent adventure slash point and click slash I've made this up, but I think it's good. Talking simulator, huh? Huh? Get it? <laughs> it is actually rife though with hard hitting modern day issues that it gets you completely invested in the story and sort of where it goes next. Now for our main characters, Tyler and Allison, this ends up going from a simple meetup which hasn't happened for 10 years to altogether something more twisty and turny than a Formula 1 racing track. Now achievements wise, you would expect, being the sort of same style and everything as Life is Strange, to sort of be collect a few things, job done, happy days, but there is quite a bit we need to do to get the full 500. Episode 2 and 3, which will be released next week, September 3rd, and the week after on September the 10th, will also have 500G each. Uh, I assume at this point it could be 250G each though, but <laughs> stay tuned. So they are simple enough though, and of course I'll explain as we get there, and we will also be picking up the five collectibles throughout the game. There is no achievement for that particular one yet, but we all know there is going to be anyway, so... Uh, I also will try and keep my yapping on to an absolute minimum, especially during cutscenes and when sort of Tyler and Ali are talking, but it may pop up now and again, so uh, yeah... There is your warning. So as you already know, uh, you know, as you know, this game, like I said, plays off sort of like Life is Strange, so your choices will matter. Um, mainly your relationship with Tyler is the main thing here. So obviously different things that you choose may affect your relationship with Tyler in the upcoming episodes. So, you know, try and play nice. Be nice, just be nice. So, with that being said then, let us begin, and we will get the monkey off our back straight away and say that, yes, Tyler is a transgender man. For anyone who may be slightly confused about that, obviously you'll get more into it and understand the story a bit more. But I have seen comments and things uh, with people just being confused, so I've got that one out the way. So he is a transgender man. This game is basically about him and the agony that he has sort of faced with his mother over the years. So that is basically that. So just enjoy the opening cutscene, you guys. Can you tell me what happened tonight? I... I went to show her my haircut. She had a gun. She... Take your time. She freaked out. I... It's okay. No, it's not. It's not okay. My mom tried to kill me, so... So I stabbed her. I killed my mother. So that opening scene then, obviously we will be taking a look a lot more um, as the game progresses. One quick joke I want to say, if there is no mention of any like uh, secret easter egg Backstreet Boys lyrics, um, I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed. Because I wonder how many people are actually going to say the name of this game and always start off with, Tell me why... Ain't nothing but it. I'm not gonna continue on singing, but there must be some kind of secret Easter egg lyrics in here after somebody says, Tell me why. There's just got to be. <laughs> I think a lot of people will be disappointed otherwise. Anyway, everyone's pretty, everyone's good looking, everyone's cleaning, and they're trying to do that whole awkward, Hi, I'm sorry, I haven't seen you in 10 years kind of stuff. Also, as long as they don't come out with, Oh, hi, Mark. 
then I think we should be good. And I hope people get that reference. So then, let us finally begin. Now, there is no audio at the moment because of the background music that will uh, actually get the video copyrighted, unfortunately. Um, there's only a couple of times throughout the game that it happens, so don't worry about that. Now, again, you can obviously take a look. There's loads of things to look at in Alison's room, but if you want to just carry on with the main story, take a look at the box under her bed. That is where the house key is, which we need to leave. Uh, there is a goblin in, in here, uh, doesn't really count as a collectible, but again, this these goblins, this, it'll all just tie the story in absolutely nicely, and you will get to know it quite a bit. So go ahead, take the keys, you can have a look at the photo if you want, it's just basically you and Tyler when you were both kids. And uh, yeah, but I do advise, to be honest, with, with every sort of new location, it's definitely worth just checking things out and having a look. It's so interesting, this story. So go ahead, have a look at yourself in the mirror, you know, free, looking good. Most girls do it, and so do the up-your-own-ass chocolate boys as well. So <coughs> nothing wrong with that, though, eh? <laughs> but we are gone. Now we are going to Tyler's house. Again, this is a letter from Alison, so you can take a look right here and have a look and see what she has written. Can't believe I'm about to. Then, when you're done with that, again, just like in Alison's room, you can have a look at loads of things that we can interact with. Otherwise, take a look at the box, which is on the table as well. It does have the goblin on it. Now. That does count as a collectible, but you won't actually get the achievement for collecting a collectible because you've actually got to find the next collectible to be able to count that as an achievement for the next collectible. That made sense, totally. Absolutely, totally. So there it is. But when you've got all of these goblins, um, they basically play a little story. So when you listen to every single one, it plays out this little story about the childhood and about them growing up, and it is... Again, just ties it in brilliantly, absolutely fantastically. But here's the cutscene, here's the scene that everybody wants. The brother and sister reunion. Yee yeah, boy! Hi, Tyler. Hi. First time we see each other in 10 years, and it's hi, Tyler. Oh, sorry, I... It's fine, Allison. Hi's a good place to start. God, it's good to see you. <sighs> Likewise. You have anything else you need to get? No, nope. this is it. My last 10 years in a bag. Then we should get going. We just have time to make the morning ferry. You look good in that. Thanks. One of my mentees designed it. 
That's really good. Yeah, he's so incredibly talented. I got a couple of local coffee shops to hang his art. Tyler Ronan, shaping the leaders of tomorrow. Yep, we're screwed. <laughs> so, are you gonna miss anything about this place? Honestly, people. The other residents, my mentees, my counselor, Aaron. It took me a while to fit in, but once I did, it felt like home. They made me feel safe. Safe enough to be me. That's so great. I'm really happy for you. We planning to drive to Delos Crossing or push? You are welcome to walk. Nah, I'll take my chances. Need one last look or anything? Looked. Let's go. So there is our first achievement of the game then, story related, unmissable, we've got our ass out of fireweed. But to be fair, I do love the brother and sister, you know, the absolute shite, sarcastic banter they have. Me and my sister are exactly the same. There's something so hilarious yet, it could be construed as extremely silly if somebody else actually heard it. No <laughs> way. Someone heard a commotion in the back of a delivery truck, so they opened it up. And there was the bear. Fat and happy on a literal mountain of empty chip bags. <laughs> you go where the food is. Oh, I can relate to that. So then what happened? I'm not sure. I think they couldn't get him to leave, so they tranked him. Oh, poor buddy. Shot in the ass just for getting the munchies. Yeah, well, you know what they say. Safety first in bear country. Yeah, but prevention is best. Common sense goes a long way in keeping them from getting shot. The bear is fine, Tyler. For now. You hear they've been talking about loosening up regulations on trophy hunting again? Higher bag limits, inhumane ground traps, even bringing back hibernation hunting. What kind of asshole gets off on killing a sleeping animal? I'm not against hunting, but predators play a vital role in the health of our natural parks. What? Why are you smiling? I'm being serious. Oh, I can tell, Ranger Tyler. Not yet, but at least I got the school part out of the way. I can't believe you've got a bachelor's already. While I boast a half-completed certificate in accounting from an online college that may have stolen my credit card number. You'll figure out what you want. You have time. How are you feeling? Like I'm about to drive straight into a whiteout and my fog lights are dead. What about you? Allison? Whoa. Zoned out there for a second. Sorry. What's up? I'm sorry. I'm just trying to wrap my head around the fact that you're right here, standing beside me, on our way to Delos. You don't have to apologize. It's a lot. Why did we take the ferry instead of the coast road? Because I didn't want to be stuck in the car with you for an extra two hours. Ha ha. <laughs> we have to take the ferry. It's the only way to reach Delos from Fireweed. I see. Well, good. I don't think my stomach could have taken two more hours of how you handle curves. I'm sorry. Do you want to take over driving when we dock? <laughs> no. You're going to have to get back behind that wheel at some point, you know. Look, I put a Fireweed van nose first in a ditch. Hey, at least you missed the porcupine. I'm guessing things haven't changed much. You mean in Delos? Still the capital of East Jesus Nowhere. Can't wait to get out of here. Was it really that bad? Pretty much. But it could definitely have been worse. Like if you'd been tucked away in a center for troubled youth? Right. At least you had Michael. Yeah. 
I don't think I'd have survived high school without him. Bet you're gonna miss him when you move to Juno. How's he doing? Good. Good, good. Uh, but I haven't seen him much outside of work lately. He's been busy with his dance and helping his clan organize a potlatch. Is that smoke coming out of Stonehouse? Guess someone finally bought that old shack. That, or the ghosts are cozying up by the fire. Think the new owners know it's totally haunted? I'm sure Tina did her best to keep them from figuring it out. At least until the paperwork was signed. Ugh. That house always gave me the creeps. Those windows are like huge gawking eyes. Uh, you think people talk about our house this way? Probably. So, we're really going back there, huh? To Stonehouse? I mean, we're going home. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Think the house will sell? No interested buyers yet. Turns out, people don't line up to buy murder houses with no electricity. <laughs> At least it's got one hell of a view. Unlike Juno. Hey, Juno has mountain views aplenty. It just also has people and fun. You still thinking you might be my roomie? I'm thinking about it. Hey. Can I ask you a question? Shoot. I was told... Um, I mean, after you, well, graduated, I guess, and became a mentor three years ago, you still basically spent all your time at Fireweed, right? Pretty much. There were a few times I tried to go to these meetups for trans people in Juno, but... Something always came up. I probably should have put myself out there more, but it was better to be around in case the residents needed me. So you were free to come and go as you pleased? Yeah. Uh, why do you ask? Oh, nothing. Just being an overly invested sister. Curious how you spent your time. Allison? Yeah? Spit it out. Okay, you need to promise not to freak out. What is it? It's a gift. From Eddie. I know he's not your favorite person, but... I'm sorry, when you said Eddie, I thought you meant Chief Brown, as in the police officer who arrested me. Come on, Ty, don't- And your adopted father, the man who didn't let you visit me for seven years. The Fireweed Administration backed him up, Tyler. They thought it was best for both of us. Yeah, well, it wasn't. It's a peace offering, and you're the two most important people in my life. Please, for me. He can't buy my forgiveness with some cheap-ass trinket. It's a gift, Tyler. You know what gift-giving means in Clinket culture, and what it means to refuse one. Fine. I'll take it, but I'm not going to wear it. Really? Really. Just so we're clear, this was for you, not Chief Brown. You know, you could call him Eddie, or even Uncle. <laughs> Hard pass. Did you hear that? like home. Yeah. Would it ruin the moment if I said I needed to call home? Uh, yes. Completely. Sorry. Go ahead. 
and stop apologizing all the time. Okay, sorry. <sighs> Thanks. About the hunting, I mean, to be fair, Tyler, he is absolutely right. Hunting just makes you an automatic dickhole ball sack. It would only be impressive if hunters actually went and fought them barehanded. Otherwise, it's, well, I wouldn't even call it a sport, but it's just for complete tossers. Uh, so, anyway, uh, Alison's going to be on the phone here. So, it's what we need to do to progress the story is talk to the other man which is on board. Alex, his name is, the only old guy. Uh, he's sort of at the back there. We can't actually jump in the car just yet. So, while Alison's on the phone, you can have a look around. But me doing this sort of uh, progress the story you can't just talk to alex directly though so go ahead and do that again any options don't matter you don't have to choose the same ones that i do but of course it depends if you want to be a nice guy like me or you want to be a jerk hey it's all good and dandy it won't actually affect any achievements so uh delos crossing same here you from around here Born and bred. Ah, you don't say. I moved to Anchorage around your age. Delos was mostly Alaskan natives then. Clink it, Haida. I haven't been home in five years. Oh, so you owed your family a visit? I'll say. You may not know it yet, but your folks, they get old real fast. Right. I'm Alex, by the way. Alex Gershwin. No relation. Huh? To George Gershwin. Um... Gershwin, the pianist. Folks are always asking for related, so I try to head it off the pass. Oh. Uh... What'd you say your name was? I didn't. I'm Tyler. Tyler Ronan. I, uh... Ronan, huh? Ronan as in the Ronans? Uh-huh. So, uh, you're... I never knew those girls had a brother. We didn't. Ah. I, uh... Nice talk. Yeah. Enjoy your time in town, Tyler. So when your conversation is done with Alex, if you're done looking around at things, you can now literally just press leave by going into the car and then press the Y button, which will um, basically respond to Alison saying yes, I'm sure, or something. But now, of course, as most of you know, I'm not trans. I've always been male. But for anyone who is watching, be honest. Is it fun to sort of freak people out like Tyler just did to Alex? You know, by the way, I hope I just did the right thing and didn't come across as an ass then. But I'm just curious to see if people like to have a little giggle at those who get stuck on what to say. <laughs> Do you know what I mean?
it's basically exactly like I remember it. Only faded. Like a Polaroid left on a windowsill. From the outside, it almost looks charming. Charm's not the problem. Structural integrity may be an issue. You think there's a chance whoever buys it will just tear it down? If someone buys it, they can do whatever they want with it. You wouldn't care at all? Would you? Sure. Everywhere I look, I see a piece of one of our adventures. Everywhere I look, I just see her. Allison, we could go grab a bite. Start this tomorrow? No. The only way to get this done is to do it. So, welcome to your old house. The scene of not many good memories, as we will see. So go ahead, try the front door. We're going to be grabbing two achievements in very quick succession here. Uh, so just try and open the door for now. We need to find another way in. Locked. Well, it's a good thing I remember this. You sure that's the right key? Yes. Maybe someone changed the lock. Who would change the lock on us? I don't know. We're screwed. You got a plan B? Yeah. We find another way in. I never knew a locked door that could keep the crafty goblins out. Yeah, we had a million ways in and out of this old house. At least one of them's gotta work. So here is the first achievement we're coming up to then, the first missable one. If you turn to the left from the house, you can see this old shed directly in front of you. If you go just to the right of that, you will see a door which is locked. All you have to do is interact with the locked door three or four times and wait for the achievement to pop. Now you won't actually see the achievement pop for me on screen because for some reason my internet died at this complete moment and it just completely didn't work for whatever reason. So you don't actually see me unlock it on screen, but make sure to sort of interact with it again three or four times, wait until the achievement unlocks, and then you should be good to go. Hey, it's locked, all right. Hey, it's locked, all right. Right then, so once that is done, by the way, that is not the only place that you can get the achievement. When we're in the police station a little bit later on, there's another locked door that we can get that. So don't worry if you actually miss it. But again, if you're following the guide, you shouldn't. Uh, we do need to go down there, but there is no way through, even though, again, you could probably just jump over a fence and jump over a pot. So if you go to the right from where we just were at the shed... Yeah, the right. Go down the snowy embankment just a little bit to go to the right and you will see this bench. Wait for Alison to catch up with you and then there will be a prompt for you to sit. So sit down, go through... Ronan? There's only two dialogue options to go through. Go through both of those and that will unlock the We Need to Talk achievement. Seriously. How are you feeling? Tired. I didn't sleep much last night. Yeah. I can't believe how we used to run around for hours without stopping. Yeah. Always a troll to run away from, or a treasure to find. We definitely never lacked imagination. Marianne didn't either. It was the one thing that brought us all together, even in the end. She told a new story, didn't she? That night, it was weird. She built this bench, right? If you're trying to scare me off so you can steal my seat, it won't work. No, I just... Remember us all sitting here after. I fell asleep and woke up really stiff later. I don't remember us sitting anywhere for more than a few seconds, which sounds exhausting now. Guess we're just old. At least we've got a few more years before we're... As old as her. Come on, that's enough rest for us. Let's get inside. All right. Right, so once we've got that, by the way, um, there will be another opportunity to get this later on if you don't want to do it here. So just go up to the house now and you'll see these boards. We basically need to try and find a screwdriver. 
if we just get this board out of the way, I could probably squeeze through. So we need something to pry it off. It's screwed in pretty good. We need a screwdriver. Sadly, only the world's strongest men will be able to rip them off. Um, and we are not one. So now we need to go to the shed. Um, there's a There was a window, uh, obviously the shed that we tried opening up earlier on. There was a window to have a look in. And this these frogs here, the middle one actually has the key underneath it. But of course, to be able to progress to this point, we need to actually look through the window first. Even though, I mean... Technically, you could have literally just lifted it up, you know, oh, I was a lucky guess, but there we go. So have a look at the window, have a look through, and the screwdriver should be directly in front of you. And now this is where the twins, they are twins, realize that they've got some kind of power. Just like Max and Life is Strange, nothing gets um, explained, but they're like, what the hell is this? So if you press the right trigger... The A button prompt will appear, hold that, and then a memory will play out in front of your eyes. Because of you. You and your big mouth. Hey, you were thinking the same thing, you just weren't brave enough to tell her. What good would it do? It's not like she ever listens to us anyway. Well, I'd rather scream it right in her stupid face than be a quiet little mouse. Oh, we forgot the key. We need to put it back. Maybe we could hide it somewhere. You know, for fun. Goblins are supposed to help the princess, not play mean tricks. Whatever, you're not fun. I'm only trying not to make her even worse. Whoa, did that just happen? I don't know, but I saw it too. It felt like it did when we used to share thoughts with our voice. It did, but that was a memory of us 10 years ago, right? I vaguely remember it happening. I think so. And uh, that's new, right? Yeah. We could share thoughts and feelings, but we never replayed memories like that. Why would it happen? And why that memory? I don't know. It's pretty eerie. It's weird, but our voice was always a good thing. This could be too. I'm feeling something again. Near the barn. Yeah, me too. Hurry! Let's go see the silent frog. Coming, I'm coming. What? Stop sulking. I told you already, I'm sorry. No, you're not. <laughs> okay, guess you don't want to see what I put in the treasure room then. What? No, I want to see. I guess we know where to search now. We just have to remember that sort of game mechanic and the memories will play a massive feature in this game. So now we can actually get the key. It is under the middle frog. If you try to look at under, obviously, the left or right. Guess what? No key. So you can't actually grab it. So make sure to look at the middle one. Now that enables us to get into the shed. And you can pick up the box of bird seed if you want. It doesn't actually do anything. I suppose there could be a point where you could feed some birds, but I uh, just sort of cracked on with the story. So up to you if you want to pick it up. But take the screwdriver, obviously, and then obviously head down to where the boards were once again, which is just to the right as we exit the shed. It wasn't me. Has someone been out here recently? Got it. All this for a screwdriver? You got a better idea how to get in? You sure you want to go in there? This was our very first den, remember? Who knows what lives down there now? Everything okay down there? Tyler? Ugh. Oh, that's not funny! 
Hey! <laughs> then why am I laughing? Okay, fine. But you're still an idiot. All right. I'm going in for real this time. Okay. I'll see you at the front door in a few minutes. Right then, so we're underneath the house and this is where we can get the first missable collectible and the achievement that sort of goes along with it. So when we get to the end of this little sort of section right here, you can either go left to carry on or you see a hole in the wall just in the right there. Alison's going to tell you to go left with her mind because twins are good like that, but go into the right, into this little cubby bit, and this is where you will find the first goblin, or the first real goblin that we can collect. Again, that unlocks us the achievement, and then we can just carry on. There's only really one path. Alison is going to tell you to go left at the goblins here, but you actually need to go right because she's wrong. Thanks for that, Hon. Real nice. Uh, but otherwise, it is only one path, and then we can enter into the housing trousen. Wow, can't say I ever expected to see you again. It's been a long time, buddy. Nope, it was on the right. My bad. Past the treasure. Straight, Straight ahead. ahead. You know, I almost convinced myself our voice was just another child of fantasy. Me too. But we really are connected. Coming. Are you okay? I'll live. Good to hear your voice again. Yeah, same here. So, coming in or what? Just working up to it. Well, we're here. Here we are. So, how do we get started? We figure out what to keep, what to trash, and see what else this house might be trying to show us. So we are, as you can obviously see, now in the house. Looks nice and cosy. Doesn't look bad after being abandoned for 10 years. That is a puzzle, another achievement that we will uh, be able to do later on. There are actually two ways. You can actually just bash the door down and get through. But of course, you'll miss out the achievement for that. So we'll do a couple of things first uh, to progress the story. And the first thing is to, uh, we need to do a memory in the living room right here. So again, press the right trigger to get it up. Hold the A button and watch the memory. About me joining the hockey team? Mom. Sorry, what? Uh, not now. Maybe next year. But you promised. Keep whining and my next year will become never. Can you cut my hair? Your hair is fine. But I want to cut it short, 
really short. What? Look, I'm tired. And I'm busy. Let's talk about this later. You always say that. Marianne said no to everything. It made me so pissed. She was always on edge those last few months. Yeah, and completely deaf to everything. So at the minute then, it looks pretty uh, open and shut. Doesn't look too good for big old Marianne there. She looks like she's a transgending, hating murderer or attempted murderer. But of course, it's not going to be as simple as that. As we shall soon see, potentially. Maybe she is, maybe she's not. Who knows? You've got to wait and see. <laughs> anyway, head up the stairs. We're going to be going into the left of the bedroom right here. Um, and by the way, for some of these sort of puzzles and things through the game, there is actually a more in-depth and slightly more complicated way of doing them. Um, but of course, you won't see me doing it. But uh, good old reliable P Macker 91 good old Patrick Macker, he has actually provided us with some videos on how each individual puzzle works. So definitely worth checking them out if you want to, if you want a bit more of an in-depth knowledge on that. So thank you to Macca for that again. Otherwise, have a look at on the table in the box. This, it's actually this book, which has the symbols we need to be able to unlock the um, puzzle on the door of Mary Ann's room. So again, like I said, it's a bit more complicated, a bit more in depth than what I'm going to be doing. So again, like I said, have a look at those um, videos from Macca. Otherwise, we're going to be looking at another memory now. Yeah, that day she found out about it. Mom? Mom! Mom, where is it? What did you do with it? What now? I can't find my diary. I know you stole it. Give it back. Sweetie, whatever I do, it's just for your benefit. You read it, didn't you? You had no right to do that. I have the right to do whatever I need to protect my little girl. I'm not your girl. I hate you. You will always be my little girl. And no matter how hard you fight me, I'll fight twice as hard to keep you safe. saw it coming. She told me right to my face. She was willing to hurt me, to keep me from transitioning. Tyler, there is no way you could have known she'd go that far. I want my diary back. Her room was the only place I didn't look. Okay, but do you need to get it, like, now? That diary was important to me, Allison. Writing down my thoughts helped me realize who I am. Well, then let's go find it. You think her room is still locked? It always was. I'm not looking forward to going in there. I know, but we'll have to eventually. I need it back. The Ice King finally caught the hag. His furious voice could be heard throughout the forest. For your wickedness, you will be eternally bound to the lake. What? No way. Quiet, let me finish. You will no longer be allowed to leave. Not even under a full moon. The moon hag was imprisoned in the lake. And she never again tried to escape. Hmm. And then the title. What do you think? Not bad, right? Mm, I guess that's okay. But I right then, so now we have progressed 
far enough into the story to be able to go into Mary Ann's room and the solution is extremely simple. So when we go to open it, all you have to do is the very left one is moose, the middle one is bear and the right hand side one is pelican. So moose, bear, pelican, moose, bear, pelican, keep that in your head, that is the answer. I mean, yes, we could brute force it, but it might be kind of fun to finally solve it, right? We have different definitions of the word fun. Okay, well, if we break it, we're just gonna have to fix it for the sale. So let's at least try not to. You have the Book of Goblins? Yep. Hand it over. What are you looking for? The image on the door. It's making me think of a story from the book. One that Marianne wrote. You have a way better memory than me. Well, the Book of Goblins was my creation. And you'll never let anyone forget it. Here it is. The one about the princess's party. Give it a read. I think the symbols may represent something in the story. First ghost memories, now storybook puzzles. What a weird day. What a weird childhood. Touche. And boom, we're in. I'm the one who solved the riddle. Why do I feel like you're not going to let me forget that? Where do you think we should start looking? I don't know. Where in this mess would she stash someone else's personal thoughts? So that's another lovely achievement unlocked for us. And when we're in the bedroom, go to the right hand side of the bed and that will be yet another collectible for us to find. The, um, the wise princess, I think this one is. Yes, the wise princess, I obviously knew that. I just can't get through. Whatever's going on, they won't let me in. They used to tell me everything, but they shut me out, Tessa. They've shut me out. I've had so much on my plate lately, and... And... They're convinced I'm the enemy, and I don't know why! I need them. I need my goblins. I remember. So now you kind of feel sorry for her, don't we? Uh, but otherwise, to once again progress the story, have a look at the uh, desk drawer right there. That is where the diary is. And Tyler's gonna be pissed off. I knew it. I fucking knew it. Do you think she read it? Of course. She was nosy as hell.
Tyler. What? Look. What? Where did you find that? It was on her desk with her papers. Seriously? Are you fucking kidding me? Look, we gotta be really careful not to overthink this. But it doesn't make any sense. She, she was mad, right? She was mad I, I, I cut my hair. She attacked me because I cut my hair. She was mad and she attacked you. We both saw it. Then what is this shit? I don't know. I don't know. Tyler, come here. She can't do this to me. Not now. When I f finally made sense of a few things. Well, that was your first mistake. Thinking the world made any kind of sense. Ten years in the grave, and she's still finding new ways to piss us off. Yeah. I think I need some air. Are you really, really sure? I am. Do it. Okay. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Whoa. Is it all gone? Yeah. It, it looks amazing. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to show mom. She's been so sad lately. More than sad. She's been scary. Yeah, but not tonight though. It was almost like a party. <gasps> Thank you, Allison. You don't have to thank me. You're my sister. I feel more like, like your brother. Brother, sister, we look out for each other. But I'm pretty sure I just gave you a really bad haircut. <laughs> <laughs> This is 
wrong. This is all wrong. Wait! Stop! Glad we found your diary. Me too. I guess she was trying to figure out where you were at. Yeah, well, she should have asked. I wasn't some goddamn research project, I was her child. About the book. Raising your transgender child? Do you even know how rare these books were in 2005? Was she trying to figure out how to support me? Maybe. Which, she wasn't trying. She never... <sighs> it doesn't make sense, I know. You cutting your hair was what set her off, right? Allison, she read my diary. She already knew. It wasn't my hair. And if we were wrong about that, fuck. You think she read it. It's possible she never even opened the diary and that things are exactly like we always thought they were. But if she did and they aren't... God, Tyler. Sure. I mean, we could have been wrong. But what good does it do to ask the question now? You mean other than not having to live with the thought that my mom tried to kill me for being me? Tyler, I know you want there to be something to find. Something that'll make it all make sense. But she was unhinged. So that's it then. She was crazy. Nothing else to say. I think we'd be better off if we tried to move on. Why don't we talk to a few people who knew her? See if that book makes any sense to them. People don't want to talk about Marianne. They pretend like that night never happened. What about Tessa? She was Marianne's closest friend. Let's ask her about it. Sure. But I'll warn you, she's particularly touchy about this subject. Well, maybe she'll talk to me. I was always her favorite. Operative word was. But we need to go by the store anyway to get a few things for the repairs. Great. Two seagulls, one stale hunk of bread. I'm not sure I like that analogy. Listen, I know you don't want to keep talking about this, but you're obviously not going to be satisfied until we do. So let's talk. So, we have a plan? Yep. We ask around about Marianne, but we also stick to our repair schedule. If that's really what you need. All right. Deal. Ollie's Diary. It's been a long time since I heard that name. Was I the only one who ever called you that? Actually, no. I used it at Fireweed for a while, until I settled on Tyler. Most people were pretty chill about the switch. Not everyone, though. What do you mean? I had a mentee who refused to call me Tyler. He didn't want my help. He didn't want anyone's help. I'm sorry. I like the name Tyler, by the way. Thanks. And this really is where the uh, investigation into what actually happened takes a bit of a turn. This is where the confusion begins. But if you want to leave this particular conversation, just actually talk to Allison. And we'll go actually into the house where we'll get a little surprise. Your boyfriend? Come on. I told you I'm not with anyone right now. Don't rub it in. Why does it look familiar? It was a gift from Eddie. He had them both made at the same time. Both? Oh, wait. Yeah. This ring is supposed to be linked to the one he gave you, in a spiritual way. Do you believe in all that? You mean, do I believe we could be linked in some other metaphysical way? You know, other than the one that already lets us share thoughts and memories. Fair enough. I think we should head out right away. Already tired of the view? Just finding it hard to relax and enjoy it with so much on my mind. Go ahead. I'll catch up. 
Need to respond to a message. Ah, my sister, the social butterfly. Seems we got a trespasser. Uh, what the fuck? You got five seconds to talk me into defending my property. Your property? Five. Four. I'm Tyler. Don't know any Tylers. Three. Two. Sam! Ellie? What are you doing out here, girl? This is our house. Was I talking to you? Sam, put the gun down. This is Tyler, my brother. Well, your brother? Oh, shit. Huh. I guess I heard about all that, but I never... Damn, you look like a real man. So do you, Sam. You know what I mean. I just didn't know they could make a woman look so much like a man. You know, I'm just trying to be me. It's just who I am. Hmm. Well, I've seen a couple of lady transvestites on the TV before, but, uh, I've never seen a dude. Sam, that's not how you say that. Say what? Transvestites? Yes. It's transgender. Transgender men. Uh, I'm sorry. It's hard to keep track out here in Delos Crossing. <laughs> the world's just moving on without us. It's fine. Let's just change the subject. <laughs> Works for me. Tyler. Thanks, Sam. So, what are you doing here exactly? Oh, well, I, uh... I've been kind of keeping an eye on this place for you, you know? It's like patching the roof, checking the pipes, and all that stuff. Thank you, Sam. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, that's no big deal. I just, you know, your mama, she was, uh, she was a special lady. She deserved much better than, you know, uh, what you got. Didn't you used to help Mary Ann with repairs and building projects? Oh, yeah. Yeah, seeing as your mama never had a man around, I just you know, took it on myself to help her keep this place standing. How antiquated of you. Thanks. I uh, guess you two are still aiming to sell the place? That's the plan. Which, by the way, we need your keys. Since apparently you went and changed the locks? Oh yeah, absolutely. But, uh, selling your mother's house? Are you sure? Bad or good? It's all you've got left of her. Not all. I'm sure the gun she tried to kill us with is still somewhere in there. Tyler! What? What Tyler means is, a fresh start is what we both need. Of course. Yeah. This place has got to be full of all kinds of bad memories. But maybe some good ones too? So you don't actually have to speak to Sam if you don't want to. Um, you might as well try and find out all you can from him. And then press the right trigger. And you can either, the two options are he's hammered or we should get going. If you want to just progress the story without... Um, Having a look at this, press the right trigger, press the X button, and you will be going then to the store. Much as anything ever has. Other folks say they saw it coming. Not me. Did you help with her door? Her door? The puzzle on her bedroom door. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You two kept sneaking in, giving her no privacy, huh? You ever solve it? Yep. 
Better late than never, I guess. Uh, never solved it myself. Uh, I mean, not that I wanted to. I, I, uh, uh, so, uh, guess you know all your mama's secrets now, huh? Well, she may have one or two left. We should get going. That's all you think we'll get out of him? He's too wasted to be of any more help. I'll tell him to get a move on then. Well, we've got a supply run to make and Uncle Eddie's expecting a visit, so. All right. Yeah, of course. Uh, get going, you two. Um, Sam? We all gotta get going. Oh. Uh, of course. Of course, yeah, I got lots to do myself. I, lots of to-dos on old Sam's list. Uh, and you don't want to keep Brown waiting, you know? <laughs> Thanks for looking out for this place. Happy to do it. I... Uh, don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything. Anything at all. You hear? Sam? Huh? Uh, Sam? Huh? The keys? Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah, they're, they're yours. I, uh... uh mm, this place... It meant a lot to your mother. It almost felt like... It was a part of her, and, and it's like some part of her is alive here still. Hopefully the house doesn't turn out to be a murderous psycho that tries to kill us in our sleep, huh? Uh, yeah. Well, uh, take care of yourself, uh, both of you. Hey, so we really do have a lot to do. Okay. Go on, I'll be right behind you. Man, it's 2020. I don't get how there's still so much, how can I put this sort of nicely, ignorance towards still the LBGTQ community, for one, um, and just intolerance as a whole. I still cannot believe there's a massive level of ignorance. Sadly, though, it is the world we're living in, and all we can do is just keep fighting the good fight. Get on it. Get on it. But we are coming up to the store now. We're actually... Not too far from the end of the game. We are sort of around oh, about 30 to 35 minutes from the end now. Obviously, really depending on if you want to look around and uh, keep checking out all things story related. Ready to Veni Vidi Vecchi? I'm ready to talk to Tessa. Just try to keep in mind that your memory of her is 10 years out of date. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be if she reached out to me while I was in Fireweed, which she didn't. So I'm guessing this is Michael? So there's not actually a lot to do here, just walk forward until we get to the beautiful man that is Michael, and we're gonna have a little chat with the man himself. Hey you! Hey, isn't it your day off? Yep, we're here as patrons. Tyler, meet Michael. This is the annoying co-worker I was telling you about. I was there for your introduction to marshmallow vodka and wine coolers, and I've only worked my way up to annoying co-worker. Rude. 
Don't worry, she told me exactly how miserable she'd be in this town without you. It's so good to finally meet you. The Tyler talk goes on 24-7, so I feel like I already know you. So, uh, you here to grab some stuff for the homestead, or...? Yeah, we decided it'd be easiest if we just stayed out there. We'll get it cleaned up faster if we literally cannot escape it. Hey, I'm all for efficiency. <laughs> cannot wait for us to get out of here. What's that? Um, Michael is moving to Juno, too. We were thinking of being roommates. Oh. Okay. Thinking about it? You better not be backing out on me. The only thing that gets me up some mornings is marking one more day off the calendar. <laughs> Don't worry, she won't. We'll get the house sold, and you guys can move on. There could be room for you, too. <laughs> for sure. The more Ronins, the merrier. I'm studying to be a chef, so, uh, you know it'll be good eating. And hey, I only snore during allergy season. And baseball. <laughs> How can I say no to that? <laughs> <sighs> you okay? Dead on my feet, girl. Got up at four to fish before work. It's been a day. Oh, you like to fish? Yeah, there's this spot called Buzzard Hole I go to at least twice a week. It's like an hour drive, but it's so chill, especially first thing in the morning. Shut up, I used to go there all the time. For real? Yeah. Hey, well, if you want to go sometime, holler at me. I don't mind sharing. Cool. Most guys I know get all Smeagol about their fishing spots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at you two. Bonding over the most slow and boring way to kill an animal. She's just jealous because she couldn't catch a fish. Even if she filled the lake with cyanide first. I'm not... Ugh, never mind. Tyler, we better get started with our shopping. Yeah, I'll be around if you need anything. So very shortly we're coming up to one of the sort of long-winded achievements it only takes a couple of minutes but it's still there's a particular pattern and there are things that we need to collect in order to gain said achievement then we have to say the correct things to tessa the owner of the shop right here so again as you've noticed i've obviously gone through all these memories you don't have to it's literally just a story related purposes you won't miss an achievement or anything for it not in this episode anyway but once this is done, just go ahead on the inside. There's only one way to go in and talk to Big Tom Morello. His name's not Tom Morello. That's the uh, Rage Against the Machine guitarist. But his name's Tom anyway, and that's close enough for me. Did you forget something in the office? No, just doing some shopping. You remember my brother, Tyler? Your brother? Oh, right, Tyler. What a pleasant surprise. Didn't Allison tell you I'd be by today? Yes, I think she did. I just didn't expect to see such a dapper young man. <laughs> well, I did shower this morning. <laughs> did you just get back into town, or...? More or less. We've been working out at the old house. But surprise, surprise, after ten years of sitting empty, it was missing a few things. Hence the supply run. Ah, oh, right. Well, we'll get you set right up. It must be nice to be home. Uh, I'm not sure nice is the word for it. Oh, of course. I assume being there feels complicated. That's one way to describe it. Well, don't let me keep you any longer. I'll be here if you need anything. Oh, hey, is Tessa around today? Um, the wife's not in at the moment. I'm sure she'll be around later, though. So before we begin the said long-winded achievement, which is the full confession achievement, we actually have to do a little bit of shopping first. So straight from where Tom's sitting, go directly to the left and pick out the drinks. You can do this in literally any order, by the way. I just found it easier to go around this way. Just found it a little bit quicker. Pick any drinks you want, any cleaning products you want, any candy you want. Again, you don't have to pick me. It's just, again, all for story-related purposes. Any opinion on cleaning products? Only that using them is an unfortunate way to spend an afternoon. I'll take the strong one. Need help with something? Ah, oh, just doing inventory. You don't want in on this. Trust me. You think you could take a picture of this? Look, all the good fishing spots are marked. Hey, Tyler. Candy or chips? You know I got a sweet tooth, sis. 
sugar rush it is. That pumpkin's huge. Let's see. Fresh cut peonies, triple layer chocolate chip cake, toasted marshmallow. Are you doing a dramatic reading of the fancy ass cookbook? Nope. Just browsing these. Mm, plain candles are fine. Okay, I think we're done here. Tom will ring us up at the counter. Will that be all? Yes. Thank you, Tom. Oh, hi, Tessa. We were just meaning to come talk to you. Hi, Tessa. Long time no see. Oh my god, you look like a completely different person. It's me. Plus beard. Yes. So we were out at the old house today. Heavens, why would you go there? Surprised it's even still standing. We found some stuff in Marianne's room that took us by surprise. Oh, really? We want to ask you some questions about her. You're the only person who might have known Marianne better than us. I, I don't know about that. It's been a decade, kids. I know, but I need to ask. What is it? Did she ever talk about me being a boy? No. It never came up. I found out much later, just like everybody else. Marianne was obviously concerned. She really didn't confide in you at all? Your mother was intensely private. She didn't need anyone else, and she made that clear. But this was about Tyler. She was always willing to ask for help when it came to us. Not at the end. Look, I have a lot on my plate today. I'm sorry. My advice to you would be to try to move on. It's not that easy. <sighs> what happened that night? You can't understand something like that, but it was God's plan. That's all we can know. I need to go now. Best of luck to you, truly. What the hell was that? I told you she wouldn't talk. It's like she's got CIA training. Something's weird here. It's weird, right? Yeah, I feel it too. It's like something's on the tip of my tongue. Well, spank my ass and call me a bitch. If that doesn't scream dodgy, I don't know what does. So she's obviously hiding a lot of stuff from us. So go to the sort of the back left corner of the shop. And we've got another memory to interact. We have to follow this memory this time. So of course, it's always right trigger and then hold the A button. Can I go outside while you and Tessa play cards? I'm afraid there's no time for games today, sweetie. Now let's go. Marianne, can you come here? Sorry, Tessa, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Oh, what's your excuse this time? Emergency repairs for the beaver dam? Tessa, look. No, I don't want to hear it. I want to talk to you now. Or do I need to start calling in your debts? Huh. I'd completely forgotten about that. I remember it, but not exactly like that. Here, let's see if we can call up my version, okay? Can we go outside while you and Tessa play cards? No, there's no time for games today. Marianne, can we talk? No, we can't. Just leave the groceries, kids. Let's go. Don't. Please, let's just talk for a few minutes. Okay? Okay. We remember that slightly differently. I guess that makes sense. Rashomon, you know? But whatever happened, after that, they walked to the counter, and then Marianne... So the twins remember this differently then, so you've got to pick whether either Tessa was angry or whether Mary Ann was angry. Now, if you're happy enough to keep going along with Tyler, it's that you have to pick that Mary Ann was angry to keep your relationship strong with Tyler. But, obviously, if you think Tessa was angry, 
by all means choose her, but your relationship with Tyler deteriorates just a little bit. Also, there will be a lack of audio in this next bit, again, purely thanks to the music copyright issues, which is a pain in the nutballs. The fuel. I'm still skeptical, but okay. For now, let's say Marianne was being Marianne. But once they got into the office, they both went at it, hard. What do you think they were arguing about? Me? Don't know. It was impossible to hear anything after she cranked up the music. But hey, now that we know she was lying to our faces, let's ask her. So, some dodges going on here. But when we regain control of Allison, go into the office where Tessa is, go straight into the you, big oh, metal please. cabinet, which is basically okay. straight in front of you as you see, and then you can see the next collectible, which will be collectible four out of five. And there is a little black book to the left of that, but we'll be coming back to that a little bit later on. So for now, we can just leave. And now that we know that Tessa and Marianne had a little fight, we can actually go and talk to her. After, you know, if you want, you can do a little bump and grind, bump and grind, oh yeah, do a little dance, bump and grind, bump and grind. Anyway, seriously, go, we do actually need to talk to her now. <laughs> so talk to her and then press A, which is your fight with Mary Ann, and this is where the achievement begins. So you have to do exactly as I do to get said achievement. Didn't you? We argued all the time. You'll have to be more specific. This wasn't about who cheated at Canasta. This was intense. You locked yourselves in the office so we couldn't hear. I'm sorry. It was a long time ago. Now, I was in the middle of something. Okay. We'll leave you to it. Damn it. I think she knows more than she's letting on. <sighs> uh, duh. But there's no way to nail her down when we don't even know what we mean. If we could pinpoint what it was about, she'd be out of excuses. Sure, but how do we do that? The music was too loud to make out what they were saying. Mm. Marianne and Tessa were obsessed with that song. It was on all the time. What are you thinking? We've been getting these visions whenever we see or hear something really emotional. Maybe listening to it will trigger something. Hmm. You may be onto something here, Ronan. We can't go back to her with anything half-assed. We should go talk to Tom. Make sure we build as strong of a case as possible. Okay. Let's see if we can figure out what song it was. Thank you, Captain Tyler Obvious, for pointing out the obvious. So, from the office, go round and talk to Tom again. And once again, we need to be choosing the A option. Remember that one song. Something I can help you with? And somehow he does, so <laughs> fair dues to him. So remember that one song. Be a weird question, but do you remember the song that Tessa and Marianne used to love? They played it all the time. <laughs> How could I forget? Uh, I think she's still got the CD back here. A little worse for the wear, of course. Uh, hold on. Uh, here it is. I was happy when it got put away, to be honest. A bit cheesy for my tastes. Is it right? Think so. <laughs> Whoa, I just got hit with a flood of memories. You seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah. So now the memories are flooding back. I'm not sure if this is timed, so, but we'll do it quickly. There's not much to do. So uh, 
Following Tyler here in this first dial, press the right trigger and then the A button to and then bring up this next memory. Mom, stop! That's so embarrassing! <laughs> oh yeah? Tessa, come join me. I know you love this song. No, I couldn't possibly. Some of us are actually trying to get work done here. Then when that one is done, just head towards uh, Tessa's office and there's going to be a, another memory uh, to take a look at in the aisle, just by the freezers right there. So make sure to basically grab both of those memories. Very important that we uh, have a look at both of those memories before we move on. No, I just had a day, okay? I took a pill. I'm fine. There he is. I said I'm fine. Kids, come on, let's go. Wait, please. I have something for you. Take a look at this when you get home, okay? They can handle this confusion. I've been working with these people for years. They can help. What do you think that pamphlet was Tessa gave to Marianne? Then from here, go into Tessa's office, go to her computer, and then switch it on. It's bad, though. Like, maybe conversion therapy bad. I'm sorry. Whoa. If this is true, I want to know how Marianne felt about it. So when we switch it on then, make sure to choose the second email out of the five, Alliance for Traditional Families. Very important that we actually click on it as well as in to read it. And then when we back out of this, we should have an icon in the top right corner. That basically signifies that we are on the right path. But of course, have another little snoop at some emails if you want, if you're really that nosy. Sadly, there's nothing interesting. No penis pics, no genitalia pics, it's just boring. So there you go, you see the icon in the top right corner, that means we are on the right track. So now go back into the cabinet where we found the fourth collectible oh, earlier on. No, no Screw off Tessa, you're lying to us, we already know. Have a look at the little black book. And basically, this black book will not open if you haven't done the previous steps. So if you hadn't looked at the two memories, uh, this black book would not open and you'd have to just come back and do it again but again it's not that hard to go into so we'll just nip to the third page which is where Marianne's debts are so basically if you again if you don't really want to read it basically Marianne was paying off her debts lovely she was in debt quite a bit and then decided to stop paying so obviously something was up there So now we're on to the last part of the achievements, and it's for talking to Tessa, but you've got to ask her the specific and tell her the specific one. So this one is A, we remember details. We need to give her specific answers now. Oh, really? Yes, really. Marianne was having one of her days. You were trying to talk, but she wasn't cooperating. The two of you started arguing, and you went in the office and cranked up that song you both loved. Next, she's going to ask what month, and of course, as we know, it's October 2004, so that's why. So October 2004, make sure to click that. October 2004, that was when she stopped trying to pay her debts, right? Yes. I don't know why, she always found a way to pay before that. But we never argued about money. I, I was frustrated, but you can't squeeze... So for the next button prompt then, it is the X button, or square on PlayStation. You told her about the camp. We know you support the Alliance for Traditional Families, and that you gave her the pamphlet about their camp. What camp? And for the very final one, it is the Y button, the Virtue Seekers Youth Camp. Make sure to click all of them and the achievement will unlock after the ensuing cutscene. So, yes, that was a little bit long-winded. Can be a bit of a pain in the booty hole if you're not really entirely sure what you're doing. But it's not too bad. It's not too bad. So I hope that helped you out just a little bit. But again, just enjoy the ensuing cutscene where, once again, things start to take another little twisty turny bob. Therapy? It's what I thought would help. Both of you, at the time. Tyler, it was worse than bad moods. She was not well. Not well at all. 
Do you know what they do to kids in those places? I do. Now. And how did Marianne take your helpful suggestion? Badly. She wanted to let you be whatever perfect little butterfly was in that cocoon. And yes, we argued about it. So she was cool with who I was? She was more than that. She loved you. Listen, I don't mean to be rude, but I really do have a lot on my plate today. Okay. We'll get out of your way then. Thanks, Tessa. Can we grab our groceries? Uh, um, Michael already put them in your trunk. Okay, thanks. Bye, Tom. See you later. What are you thinking? Just, uh, trying to wrap my brain around all that. I can't believe you got Tessa Vecchi to talk about the past. Bravo. Yeah. And Marianne, she... had my back? It really doesn't change much, right? She was still fucking crazy. She still tried to kill me. But knowing she was trying to protect me before whatever the hell happened that pushed her over the edge, it, it feels good, Allison. Hey, look at me. You are allowed to feel however you are feeling about this. God, I could use a smoke. <sighs> You're speaking my language. What? Sorry, I'm just thinking about what this means. Yeah, me too. Well, it's a good thing Eddie's expecting us. He knew Marianne pretty well, and he was in charge of her case. Did he ever mention anything about the investigation to you? No, I never asked. And I'm sure he thought I was better off not knowing. Guess that might have made for some awkward dinner conversation. Exactly. But I mean, he's a good cop. Thorough. I'm sure he's got something. Let's go. This is kind of bleak. It's usually more crowded, but the other officers punch out at six o'clock sharp. <laughs> There's no crime after six? In the mean streets of Delos Crossing? Just bears and drunken disorderlies. And Uncle Eddie can usually handle them on his own. But what about drunk bears? <laughs> anyway, he's probably in his office, upstairs. Okay then, so now we're actually on to the last area of this specific episode. So we're at the police station, we're going to meet Chief Brown. <laughs> I could literally make so many poop jokes, but I'm a 30-year-old man and I'm matured in life. <laughs> Lol, not. So anyway, where to find Chief Brown poop? <laughs> Basically, he's just up the stairs. On the left-hand side, you see the stairs, so we're going to head up now. No running in the police station, especially with scissors, as my teachers used to tell me for some reason. Has anyone actually done that? Stab themselves with scissors right right in? I don't know. But anyway, he's, he's basically the only other door on here, so knock on him. He's going to give us some keys, and then we are going to go for another achievement and trophy. Trying to convince Melinda the Ravens and her garbage aren't police business. Give me a few minutes. <laughs> sure. Make yourselves a cup of coffee. Here's the key to the break room. Thanks. Come back upstairs when you're done, okay? 
So there you go, Chief Brown there, just completely ignoring Tyler, acting like he didn't see him. Nice one. Dick move, bro, dick move. So we are going for another achievement. So when we go downstairs, you will see the reception directly in front of us. You can have a look at this memory now if you want, or you can look at it later. We're going to be looking at it now. But um, I'm obviously just going to be showing you the password, what to do very quickly just to get it out of the way. But again, Maka has made an in-depth, detailed video about what you have to do and where you have to go to actually get the password uh, to be able to unlock this achievement right here. So again, I mean... Pfft, the dude's got plenty of subscribers, so you know exactly who I'm talking about. So go over to Maka's channel and check them out. Otherwise, the quick, quick version, we're going to go straight onto the computer right here. And then using the left and right bumper, make sure to click onto D. Wilson, which is Denise Wilson. And then type in the password Salem, S-A-L-E-M. And then when you do that, we'll obviously break into Denise's. You can have a look at all her emails. Um, there's nothing um, nothing of note, nothing too incriminating, which is sad news for us, but we get the achievement out of it, which is awesome. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to look at another memory right in front of us before we head to the coffee room, or the break room, for a coffee. We're just going to sit down in here, and I'm going to ask you a few questions, okay? Okay. You know, I really thought... So then, from the reception, you can either go left and down the little hallway to um, get into the break room, or you can just <laughs> exit where I went. Opening up this private door for some reason. This is a private door that just doesn't actually lead anywhere. So that seems like a bit pointless to me. <laughs> but there we go. It's a private door that leads into the public alley anyway. Uh, the public hallway, sorry. So now we are into the break room. This, again, is where we can get the achievement we need to talk. And that's by sitting on this bench. Uh, there's two benches you can sit on. A couple around. Make sure to sit on one of them with Tyler and then you'll be able to get the achievement that way. Otherwise, again, unless you're having a little look around at things, head straight for the coffee pot to progress the story a bit more. Uh, I don't think I'll sleep much anyways. Too much in my mind. Those dusty couches won't make it any easier. Hey, you okay? can do this. Calm down, Allison. Stick to the plan. Come on, don't freak out on me now. I can't. Please, I can't lie. We already lied. It's all gonna be fine, okay? You okay? Honestly, no. Do you ever regret? No. No way. Well, maybe once or twice early on, but now, no way. I mean, look where we're at. Look where I'm at. <laughs> Uncle Eddie's probably done by now. We should go find him. Do you mind if I go inside that room for a second? Uh, you sure? Why? So there's a bit of a lie going on, is there? Hmm, well, things have certainly taken a very interesting, interesting twist there. But now this room has opened up for us. It was actually locked before. The only way we could come in here was after that ensuing, very interesting little uh, memory right there. But there is a collectible in this room. So again, you can either get it before or after this memory. Doesn't really matter. It's very short anyway. But basically, where a young Allison is walking right there, just next to the big massive metal cabinet at the back there is another collectible that is the fifth out of five collectibles like i said there's no achievement for collecting them all at the moment but you know what games are like 
um, especially games like this, they always love to collect all the collectible achievements. So that's why we're doing it. But this is the fifth out of fifth one. Have you been hiding back here all this time? And again, since you've got them all, you can take, you can have a listen to all of them, and sort of try to make sense of the story of them all at the minute. But again, it's super interest, super fascinating. It just absolutely is brilliant. Whoever the hell wrote this game, you deserve a goddamn pay rise and a pat on the back. More importantly, a pay rise though. So again, there's another little memory for us right here to have a look at. Otherwise, we'll be going straight up to Chief Brownie Pants. Why did you separate us? Is Ollie okay? Ollie's just fine, honey. They're all in the other room having cocoa. Everything's gonna be okay. I need to ask you a few questions now. Come with me. Hey, sorry that took so long. Sometimes these old folks want us to come out just because they're lonely. No worries, Uncle. Hey, you remember this guy? Yeah, of course. How can I forget? Tyler Ronan, back in Delos Crossing. <laughs> it's uh, good to be back. And just look at you, a man grown. Yep, guess I ate my Wheaties. The whole clan's so proud of you. How you work with those kids at Fireweed. I always say children of the future. <laughs> I thought that was Whitney Houston. <laughs> Come on, bro. She stole her entire act from me. Everybody knows that. Look at you two. Reunited and it feels so good, huh? <laughs> yeah, not sure how I got by without this dork. Look, Eddie, we aren't here just to say hi. We found something in Marianne's room. Things aren't really adding up anymore, and we've got questions. Oh, yeah? Did she mention anything about us that might have been worrying her? About Tyler in particular? No. She dealt with those kind of worries all on her own. Kept the rest of us at arm's length. I see. I will tell you one thing, though. Your mom. Never knew her to hate anyone for being unconventional. Usually, it's the other way around. Thanks, Uncle Eddie. If you want my advice, nothing good comes from stirring up old memories. <laughs> We don't really have a choice about that. There's always a choice, son. I know sometimes it doesn't seem like it, but there is. <laughs> Can we take a look at her file? Maybe we'd see something you didn't. Her file? Her case file, her police file, whatever you call it. You keep those pretty much forever, right? We do, but I can't just pull it out right here, right now. There are procedures. <laughs> but you're the chief. Which makes it even more important that I follow procedures. Look, Chief Brown, are you gonna help us? Or are you gonna be a cop about Tyler! This? No, it's fine. Tyler, I know you resent me, but Fireweed was the best deal I could get you. I'm not mad about Fireweed, but I may be a little salty you kept my sister away for seven fucking years. That's what this is about? Look, that was the court's recommendation. They're the experts. I just went along. Yeah, sure you did. Trust me, son. We all believed that what happened that night was self-defense, but we couldn't be <laughs> sure. I can't believe this. Look. We couldn't be sure, okay? I was trying to protect you both. So you still not sure? What? You still think keeping us apart was the right call? She was traumatized. We needed each other to heal. And you took that away from us. So why didn't you let your sister visit when you turned 18 Uncle, then, huh? Uncle, please. 
Let's move on. She's never gonna tell you how much that hurt her, but it did. That was about me. It wasn't about her. Allison gets that. And three years is nothing compared to seven. Right, Allie? <sighs> Look, Uncle. Separating us like that did not help me heal. If anything, it was the opposite. Even if he had been dangerous, I'd have taken the risk. Being apart was that miserable. I didn't know you felt that way, little moose. It was hard to talk to you about it. I didn't want to seem ungrateful. Look, we've all fucked up. And we've all hurt each other. But isn't that what family's for? Can't we just move on? Sounds like the right call. <laughs> Times like this, I... I wonder who raised who. We're gonna stay the night at the old house. We better get going. You wanna grab a bite first? It's on me. <laughs> Don't wanna send you out there with empty stomachs. I would not turn that down. Okay, let's go. I'm sorry I cut my hair. I won't do it again. I'm going to kill you! No. Please. Please. Mom, no. Mom, please. No, don't. killed her. And when they come, that's what we're gonna tell them. No, no. Yes, we look out for each other. That's what goblins do. And brothers and sisters, it's gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. <laughs> Holy crap! So, now that you actually have found out what happened to Marianne, it wasn't Tyler at all, it was Marianne. Tyler just took the fall. Well, well, well. Now, doesn't this set it up well for the next two episodes? Although, they're just doing a Netflix style. Let's leave you on a cliffhanger, and you've got to wait a week. Up your guts, fudge you. That's, that's all they're saying to us. And I appreciate that. We all appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, thanks. So, now we've got to wait to see what happens. Son of a bitch. Anyway, so that 
it was part one out of three, episode one out of three of Tell Me Why. Absolutely stunning. I absolutely loved it. And hopefully you guys enjoyed playing the game and enjoyed the guide as well. Now you've obviously got, uh, with all your decisions, the relationships, what went well, what went wrong, what kind of uh, players picked what, which I always love at the end of games, to be honest, games like this. But yeah, so like I said, hopefully you've enjoyed the game so far, enjoyed the guide so far. Hopefully you've had again a few laughs along the way. But uh, that will be that until next week. So thank you very, very much for watching, guys and gals. Again, if you did enjoy and it did help, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Check me out on all my socials, Twitter, Instagram. I am also on Patreon now as well, so make sure to give that a check out. All the links are provided in the description below. Big massive shout out to TimG84 for continuing to support the show on Patreon. Another little cutscene right well, here. He's obviously not going to give us the truth. So I say we go get it ourselves. Wait, you're not seriously thinking of breaking and entering a police archive? Go big or go home. So there we go. That's that. Thank you so much again, guys and gals. I'll see you in the next one. Big love.